um, in the first module, we're going to discuss more about the introduction to um, e-commerce and WordPress. All right. So, okay. So at the end of the session, um, you'll be able to uh, grasp some uh, fundamentals in WordPress and e-commerce. We're going to discuss uh, basic commodities in developing a website. So you'll be able to understand uh, what are these common commodities, particularly when you develop a WordPress website. Other thing is the domain name registration. So I'm going to walk you through um, on how to register a domain, although you don't have to to do this um, in a way that you really have to purchase a domain domain name right now because you are already provided with your domain name during the, I mean for this training with uh, thanks to uh, the sponsor no the ICT, but on some cases when you develop a website you need to do, to register a domain and and it's important that you understand the um, the concepts and also the best practices in choosing the domain name. Um, we're gonna discuss also web hosting. Um, so at the, end of the at the end of the session, you will understand what is WHM, what is cPanel, what is uh, a server. Diba? So uh, I'm going to introduce also different, um, different web hosting companies that you can sign up later on when you have projects. Okay, And of course, I'm going to introduce to you CDN or Content Delivery Network. This, uh, we're going to use a very specific uh, CDN for the for the training. Oh, there are so many of them in the industry, um, but for this uh, training, we're gonna use one of the popular CDNs in the market. Okay, and by the way, um, I really hope that at least you have watched the crash course from from WordPress Bootcamp that page, um, because it would be easier for you to understand some of the concepts and and term terminologies in in this module. Okay. All right, so, um, so what is a WordPress? No, so WordPress is a CMS. I'm not sure if you have heard of the term. CMS means content management system. Um, in, in other words, it's a, a system where a lot of contents are being managed. No, so uh, not just posts, not just images, not just data, not just um, other information. Diba? So many things possible um, to store within WordPress, uh, considering that it's really very flexible. No? So again, uh, CMS is content management system. So it is a software that helps users create, manage, and modify content on a website without the need for coding, no? uh, without any technical uh, without any technical knowledge. So that's the good thing about, uh, about a CMS. Kasi, uh, unlike when you create a platform from scratch, you have to deal with different um, manipulation or data manipulation relational to some extent. But here with the same as there's no need because ano na siya, built na siya, designed na siya to work that way. Okay. Or in a simpler language, guys, a content management is a tool that helps you build a website without the need to write all the codes from scratch. Okay. So, Ganon yan, content management system. Now, what is a WordPress? So a WordPress is a free and open source CMS. Okay, so CMS in WordPress, written in PHP and paired with a MySQL or MariaDB database. Okay, the, 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 when you are asked next time, like, what is WordPress? Baka sabihin nyo, that is just a website. Uh, punta ka lang sa wordpress.org or wordpress.com. Okay? I'm not sure if you have noticed that there are two different WordPress websites. One is WordPress.com. The other one is WordPress.org. Okay? And, and when you talk about the difference of these websites, the first one is cloud-based uh, cloud based CMS. Okay? The first one is cloud-based CMS or enterprise-based CMS or essentially controlled, controlled CMS. The other one, the... Uh, the, the WordPress.org, we call that one as the self-hosted CMS. So, ibig sabihin, self-hosted tayo yung nag-host ng sarili nating website. Tayo yung nagmamanipulate ng sarili nating website. In other words, yung WordPress.com, 
uh, it's still a CMS pero restricted yung mga pinagag- yung pwede natin magawa doon. Yung wordpress.org, CMS din siya but we are free to do whatever we want to do in that, in that website. Yun yung pinagkaiba niya niyan. So ngayon, um, baka sabihin ng client niya mamaya na I have a website na uh, built in WordPress and nag-sign up ako sa wordpress.com. Well, yung mangyayari doon is um, my experience yung sinabi ko na limited yung pwede niyong magawa sa wordpress.com. Okay? But still, it's still WordPress. Okay? It's just different company. Okay? Um, what we're gonna do is the wordpress.com org na ano i mean we're, what we're going to do in the in the training is a website uh built on a on a server we manage kaya self hosted siya okay so um what are the programming languages na ginagamit sa so wordpress ito yon php javascript or gs css or html and html now do i need to learn all of these languages to, for me to learn how to develop a website no Okay? You don't really need to learn these programming languages. It it's only a, um it is only an advantage, okay, if you know how to manipulate these codes or how you know how to work around these codes, diba? Uh, yung PHP um sa mga hindi um well versed in in programming, that is a server side programming language na ginagamit ni WordPress, okay? At the back end So yan yung primarily yung ginagamit why WordPress is working. Okay, in the back end, server side siya. Um, JavaScript or GS, front end siya na programming. Okay, front end, ibig sabihin yung nakikita ng tao. Kung may nakikita yung, yung pag nakikita na yung pag nakikita ng tao yung isang WordPress website, it's probably because a JavaScript code is working right there. Okay? But in the back end, hindi mo siya makikita. Kasi, uh, just like PHP, kasi nasa back end, nasa server. Okay? It's like a server communication between the, the CMS platform and, and the system na, na server natin. Okay? So, CSS, just like GS, it's also a front-end programming language. The CSS or cascade, uh, cascaded style sheet, ibig sabihin yan, Ayan yung ginagamit na programming language to adjust certain elements ng isang website. So for example, pag nag-right click tayo ng isang website, dito, limbawa, techworkspeech.com and if uh, I right click here and inspect element, do you notice that when I changed last time something like um, the, the, ano, the, the, the color like this, for example, palitan ko siya ng ng FFF, di ba? Or ganyan lang, napapalitan siya ng kulay. Ibig sabihin, um, the color is part of the CSS. Okay? More on styling siya, yung CSS. Ibig sabihin niya, cascaded, cascaded style sheet. Okay? But don't worry again, guys. You don't have to really code on this one. Bonus na if you learn this one in the process or as you grow your, or as you develop your uh, website development skills. HTML naman, ito yung kabuuan. No? Hypertext markup language. Uh, ito yung kabuuan ng isang website. Lahat ng website na na-access sa web, uh, ng browser, guys, meron yung HTML. And it, it always starts with uh, the, the opening um, uh, tag no, na HTML. Ganito dapat siya, always. So, uh, pag hindi yan access ng browser, ibig sabihin hindi yan website. Walang HTML dyan. Gets nyo? Lahat ng website na na-access nyo, meron yan HTML. So, uh, when you are asked, like particularly sa mga interviews, ano ba yung mga programming languages na meron si WordPress? Ito yung sagot nun. PHP sa server side, JavaScript, CSS, and HTML sa front-end side. Okay? At the very least, yan yung, yung sa front-end. Okay, there, uh, you probably have seen a lot of ano, websites na and na, na ginagamit nyo and, and, you, and you probably did not notice it na WordPress pala yon. Now tell me what are your favorite websites? Can you type in your favorite websites? Okay? Can you type in your favorite websites in the comment? 
Google, Facebook. What else? Netflix. Mapili kayo ha. Pinipili nyo yung mga <laughs> yung mga lalaking website. YouTube. Okay, those websites are not built on WordPress. Okay, but they have uh, sections na mga properties nila like yung mga blogs nila, di ba? Nag-gumagamit ng WordPress. Okay? Si Facebook, sa pagkakaalam ko, before they used the WordPress for their um, parang press press section ng website nila. They, they, they were using WordPress there. I'm not just sure if they're still using right now. All right. So among those websites na mga popular that you probably did not just notice it na WordPress pala yon, kaya ng Microsoft website. Micro, uh, Word, it's built on WordPress, no? particularly their uh, Word, Word, uh, Microsoft blog. No? Um, TechCrunch, yung website ng Cpanel, yung website ng White House before. No? So it's built on WordPress. And, and PlayStation blog. Madami actually. No? Uh, kanina, when I ask your favorite websites, I, I thought you will share something like... Uh, yung mga ABS CBN News, GME News, yung mga ganun, or mga yung mga balitang channel, no? Uh, or mga favorite blogs ninyo. Most, and most of them, guys, are are built on WordPress. Okay? Yun yung bang parang WordPress. Uh, it's the, the, the main website, I guess, is not, but I'm not just sure if they have other, ano, no? If they have other, um, if they have other section of the website that uses WordPress. Now, how will you know, guys, if the website is built on WordPress? Okay, there are two ways. It's either you look into the code, okay, and type something like themes. Okay, then just look for that one. If you see within the themes certain sections that says WP, that means that website is WordPress. Okay? Another another way to check if the website is built or on WordPress is through this one. I'm going to teach this one to you. Uh, this is a ninja tactic. <laughs> okay, you, you open your browser and go to the extensions. And go to the Chrome Web Store. And look for this application called Wapalizer this one now you open that uh, extension and add to chrome okay wait until it is installed in the in the browser as your extension this particular um extension or app no uh tinatawag natin wapalizer this actually tells you what are the platforms running on a certain website. Okay, so let's check um, again. So as you can see, it's installed already. And when, when you have that installed, dito nyo some kikita, just pin it so that you can easily um, you can easily click on that one every time you want to check a certain website no? when it comes to the technologies na ginagamit nila. Okay, go, let's go back to TechWorks muna. Okay, refresh nyo lang yung website ng TechWorks. And as you can see, dito sa Wapalizer, madami siyang nakita na technologies. And if you click on it, you will see that the CMS is WordPress. Okay? And the CDN is Cloudflare. Meron ding database in MySQL. And then another mga technologies right here. Okay? So dito lang muna tayo sa pagtingin kung, kung WordPress ba yung CMS niya. So confirm yung TechWorks is WordPress. Now let's check Union Bank. Refresh lang natin siya. Okay, so yung Wapalizer natin na, na, na activated, no? Madami siyang nakita. Let's check. Okay, so yung CMS ng Union Bank is not WordPress, but instead Drupal. Okay? Drupal. Take note of the term, Drupal. So Drupal si, um, si Union Bank. Not WordPress. Alright, so um, let's continue. Now, when you talk about CMSs, now there are so many of them. So meron tayong Joomla, meron, tang, meron din tayong Drupal, kagaya ng ginagamit ni Union Bank, di ba? Drupal. Ayan. Drupal siya. Meron Squarespace, meron WordPress.com, 
meron din Wix among other platforms. Meron din Weebly. Di ba? Those are CMS. Now, ano yung panagkaiba nila compared kay WordPress or WordPress.org? This um, Joomla is a self-hosted na, na CMS. Drupal is a self-hosted din na CMS. Si Squarespace is a cloud-based uh, CMS just like WordPress.com. Cloud-based siya. Wix is also a cloud-based na CMS. Ano nga ulit guys yung cloud-based na CMS? What comes to mind when cloud-based yung CMS, hindi siya self-hosted? Somehow limited. Limited um, pwede yung gawin. function. Correct. No? So limited yung pwede yung gawin. Kasi yung total control hindi sa inyo. Nasa company na nagmamanage ng CMS na yan. Okay? That's good? All right. So uh, in a basic yun yun. So WordPress uh, is a CMS. CMS is a content management website. Yung programming language na ginagamit ni CMS ay uh, P PHP, um, GS, CSS, HTML. Okay, now, ano nga ulit yung database na ginagamit ni, ni WordPress? My SQL. MariaDB. MariaDB. Yeah. MariaDB. Yeah. Correct. MariaDB or MySQL. In most cases... My SQL. No? In most cases, depende kung saan siya naka-host. So yeah, that's good. So uh, at least you 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 got it. And then madaming mga websites na uh, gumagamit ng WordPress. Uh, we're gonna talk more of the stats later on. Now, uh, let's talk about the the e-commerce side of it. No? So in the e-commerce side of uh, WordPress-based websites, um, yung ginagamit ng e-commerce platform is called WooCommerce. Okay? So sasabihin natin, so si WooCommerce ba is the direct competitor of Shopify? Definitely. Okay? Si Shopify is a standalone e-commerce platform. Si WooCommerce is an e-commerce platform usually used with WordPress. Okay? Now, now what makes uh, WooCommerce different from the likes of Shopify? Si Shopify is just like the other CMS, no? Yung 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 uh, cloud-based siya. It's because minamanage pa rin siya ng company behind Shopify. Okay? So restricted. You will probably you probably have seen this one already na uh, yung mga Shopify stores if napapansin niyo, pare-pareho yung hitsura. Limited lang yung mga designs, limited yung templates. 'Di ba? Tapos uh, yung mga yung mga experience pare-pareho halos it's because um it's very restricted unlike with WooCommerce WooCommerce is an open source e-commerce plugin for WordPress it is designed for small to large sized online merchants using WordPress so when we say open source what comes to mind unlimited free free no free Um, ibig sabihin yan, yung when we say open source, yung code niyan is nasa public. You can just access it in the repository like uh, in GitHub di ba? or in other channels like uh, WordPress itself. No, You can download the plugin there and, and tinker on the codes. So open siya. Unlike with the likes, with the likes of Shopify or mga, mga cloud-based na mga CMS, usually yung mga uh, codes nila are restricted. Hindi nakikita yan ng mga developers lahat. Okay? So, uh, that's actually what makes uh, WordPress and WooCommerce really good because it is open source and that means it can grow easily considering that there are thousands to millions of developers looking into that in improving the platform. Yun yung nakaganda ng open source. So, Again, open source means the code, the source code is open to the public. Okay? So ano ano yung mga ibang uh, iba ibang um, e-commerce platforms so, so, nandiyan yung Shopify, yung Magento, yung Big Commerce, PrestaShop, e-commerce e uh, e no, among other things. So in other words, these are the competitors of WooCommerce. 
Um, later on, you'll probably encounter uh, clients having a Shopify store. And trust me, guys, Shopify is just very easy to use. Once you know how to get around WordPress, madali na lang yan si Shopify. Okay? But the, the, the thing is with Shopify, considering the restrictions, ang, ang dami niyang hindi mo magagawa doon. Uh, number one, kagaya ng, uh, of course, the, the, the flexibility when it comes to the design. No? Um, things like SEO, ang, ang, it's challenging to do SEO for Shopify stores compared to WooCommerce stores. Um, the scalability ng store. So Shopify, uh, since it is paid and the payment depends on how big or small your website is, when the website gets bigger and bigger, lalong nagiging mas mahal si Shopify at, lagi, at lalo na, mas lalo siyang nagiging bloated no? or humihina din siya. But with, with uh, WordPress or ma, WordPress and, and WooCommerce, mas, mas uh, madali lang siya ang scale no? Yung scalability is hindi siya mahirap. Uh, Magento, this is usually used by medium-sized businesses no? or yung mga enterprise businesses. Yung medyo malalaki na. No, but when, it, when, we, when we talk about micro, small um, businesses or even medium businesses, it's WooCommerce. Okay, so the other um, the other e-commerce platforms here are, are uh, usually used by uh, other companies, no? Na hindi mainstream. Okay. Okay, let's talk about the stats, no? So just how popular WordPress and WooCommerce are. You probably ask, like, is there even a market uh, for WordPress uh, development or WooCommerce development? Definitely, no. So, as you can see here, as of April 2021, approximately 41 percent of all websites are built on WordPress, according to W3Text.com and BuiltWin. No. So, come to think of it, in all the websites across the globe, 41 percent, more or less. Or forty percent, sabi na natin more or less, na are built on WordPress. Sino sino pa ba yung maghati-hati ng iba? Si uh, nandon si Shopify, di ba? Nandon si Drupal, nandon si uh, nandon si Joomla, di ba? Madami. Kaya yung mga web ay yung mga platforms na to konti lang talaga yung users when it comes to the macro view of it, na okay. Um, so as you can see dito, no? um, the, the, the WordPress platforms or the WordPress platform is, is used by a, by a lot of websites com as compared to the likes of Shopify, Joomla, Squarespace, Wix, and among other platforms. And for the e-commerce platform, di ba? Kanina, CMS yan. So you see, you see WordPress yung number one. Now, when we, when we talk about uh, WooCommerce platform, I mean, e-commerce platform, rather, um, yung, yung mas malaki pa rin yung share ni WooCommerce, di ba? Compared to platforms like Shopify and Magento. So, Shopify, um, 18%. So, sabihin natin nasa 20% siya. Uh, si WooCommerce, it's... 30% more. No? So it's like um, as, as the adoption continues, as the adoption grows, that means mas lalo natin uh, mapapalaki yung market share ng, uh, ng WooCommerce. Okay? Okay, so now that you already know the um, you're familiar already with WordPress, you're familiar already with WooCommerce as the um, e-commerce platform and you already have insights when it comes to the market shares. Ano, ano nga ba yung pwede ninyong maging uh, career no? when you uh, when you <clears throat> acquired uh, skills in, in, in WordPress? So pwede kayong maging website designer, pwede rin kayong maging WordPress web developer, pwede rin kayong maging isang e-commerce site developer, um, or landing page designer. So ano yung pinagkaiba dito sa e-commerce site developer at sa WordPress website developer? Any clue? Any clue guys? 
I'll guess uh, WordPress, uh, web developer, the WordPress web developer, sir, is ikaw yung gagawa ng website. Yung e-commerce is nandyan na yung website. Uh, pwede, no? Um, okay, so there's another one here. Online store lang e-commerce. Okay, so WordPress web developer, meaning um, you can develop a website na walang e-commerce feature. Nagets niya? Plainly WooCommerce, uh, plainly WordPress lang siya. So for example, um, you'll probably see a website or a client na magpagawa ng website na yung gusto niyang website is five uh, main pages lang plus blog section. So yan. As a service provider, you are the web developer there. Walang e-commerce. But when we talk about e-commerce at developer, Ito yung pagdi-develop ng e-commerce store or online store with both WordPress and WooCommerce. Kasi nga, di ba, yung WooCommerce hindi siya pwedeng magamit na walang WordPress. Kasi nakadepende yung, yung WooCommerce or nag-work lang yung WooCommerce sa WordPress platform. Okay? So in other words, if you look at it, yung paggawa ng ordinary website is mas mura compared to magpapagawa ng online store or e-commerce store. Kasi yung, yung e-commerce store, may additional features na yan compared to just uh, the standard websites. Okay? You can also become a landing page designer, um, particularly if uh, you, you get to work with marketers no? na uh, merong different uh, landing pages na kailangan in the campaign. You can also become an on-page SEO uh, when you have um, the, the, the SEO and WordPress, WordPress skills. Um, you can also become a WordPress virtual assistant, particularly if you, uh, no, if you offer just anything around WordPress. Okay, when I say just anything around WordPress, sasabihin mo kay client na you can handle the publishing of the content, publishing of the post, publishing of the blogs. You can manage um, graphics and upload it to the website. Make sure that it is optimized. If you can fulfill um, different um, inquiries, no, or you can you can address different uh, orders, no, or inquiries don sa mga contact forms among other things. So lahat ng lahat ng mga activities sa website pwede mo sang gawin you can become a WordPress VA. Pwede ka rin maging project manager. No? So, uh, when, you, ano, when, you, um, when you know how to manage projects plus you have the, the, the knowledge in WordPress development, mas mapapadali mo yung uh, project or mas mapapa-efficient mo yung project when you have these uh, skills. Diba? So, pwede ka rin maging project manager. Or pwede ka rin maging website success manager. More or less similar sa project manager. Now, let's move on and, and discuss the basic commodities in developing a website. Okay, so here, um, we're going to walk through first those uh, with those commodities. And, and later on, I'm going to show you how you can purchase them. No? In preparation, uh, just in case you have clients or projects later on. Okay, so uh, in in nutshell, guys, there are three basic commodities in developing a website. No? So we have the domain name, we have the SSL or secure socket layer, we have web hosting, cPanel or essentially the server. Okay, so pag sinabi natin domain name, ito yun yung tinatype natin, google.com. Okay, techworkspage.com, unionbank.com, bpi.com.ph, facebook.com, yourname.com. So, yun yung mga domain name. Now, um, essentially, no, um, just to provide you some insights, no, how, exactly, how exactly it works, yung domain name dito. Normally, it, yung domain name natin, may nakamask dyan na IP address data. But because of what we call as the DNS or domain name system, diba? 
hindi mo na sasabihin yung IP address as your address. Di ba? Instead, sinasabi na lang natin techworksph.com. Pero sa techworksph.com guys, meron niyang equivalent na IP address. Kasi hindi mo naman pwedeng sabihin later on in your market, visit me at 192.168.4.56.com. <laughs> Di ba? Hindi naman pwedeng ganon. Mahirap yon. So we have a technology, we have a system, it's called DNS or Domain Name System. Okay? Which actually mask all these IPs or internet protocols, no? IP addresses with um, human readable names. Okay? So, so yung DNS, siya yung nagmamask, nagmamask ng, ng IP address para mas madali siya mabasa ng tao. Okay? Okay, so that's domain name. The SSL, madali lang siya. Secure socket layer. Ito yun yung mga nandito sa malapit sa domain name, yung may padlock. Okay? This one. Yan yung SSL. Now, when we talk about SSL, it involves what we call as uh, SSL certificate. Now, what exact, uh, how exactly the SSL works? No? Um, the, I mean, how, what's the idea behind the SSL? Before, okay, before, hindi siya actually standard na lahat ng websites merong SSL. Ang daming website before na walang SSL. But now, considering that uh, data is becoming more, uh, I mean, with the data privacy measures na nire-require or in place from different um, uh, institutions, no? or even the government. Sa US, meron tayong tinatawag na, uh, particularly sa California, meron tayong tinatawag na uh, CCPA, no? California City Privacy something. No? Um, and, and in in the in the eurozone meron tayong tinatawag na GDPR yung general data privacy regulation GDPR and here in the Philippines meron din tayong data privacy act okay sa so DPA of 2012 and 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 because of the lacks of NPC or the National Privacy Commission imposing really strict guidelines when it comes to the compliance of of these measures Websites these days are now requir required to at least have SSL. Okay? And and on top of this, even the likes, even the even companies like, like Google, no, uh, even companies like Google, when you don't have the SSL, they tend to um like block the the website at the browser level. I'm not sure if you have noticed that one. Now, when you when you visit a website na hindi siya naka HTTPS dito, wala siyang SSL, pumupula yung browser na Google Chrome. Sinasabi niya na some some kind of risk is is there, no? Or your session is at risk. Meron mga ganun. So, um, another thing with Google is sa SEO. Binibigyan pabor ni Google yung mga websites in ranking them in the search engine results. Mas pinibigyan ng pabor ni um, ni Google yung mga websites na naka-SSL compared sa mga hindi naka-SSL. So ano ba yung sinasabi natin uh, SSL or Secure Socket Layer? Simple lang guys. Yan yung HTTPS na nasa browser. Ito yan. Okay? When you say something like HTTPS tapos kulay green, ibig sabihin merong SSL yan. Valid yung SSL certificate niya. Now, uh, pag yung website is naka-HTTP lang, Okay, and then um, nag-open ka ng website na yan, most likely, i-block siya or mag-display mag mag yung browser ng notice na you are visiting a website that is not secure okay, at the domain level. This one. Okay, so um, I will not discuss more the, the very technical details about how the certi certificate works. Later, I'm going to discuss when we install and activate your SSL in the exercise. Okay? Okay, so let's move on. The third one is the, um, the, the web hosting or the cPanel or the server. Now, the web hosting or the, the server itself, no? 
this is where the files are placed. This is where the files are hosted. Kaya, kaya siya tinatawag na web hosting kasi nag-host siya ng files. Uh, when we talk about files, it's, it, it is not just images, videos, or uh, text contents, or data, no? uh, etc. Now, when we talk about that, um, uh, it's just actually it's just actually a computer. Okay? Yung server, yung web hosting, yung computer lang yan. Nasa remote na area. Nasa sabihin nyo, so kung computer lang pala yung server, ibig sabihin, my computer can be a server. What do you think is the answer? Oh. Can yes. you type the answer? Yes or no? Yes and no. <laughs> Salag. <laughs> okay? Okay. Technically, the answer is yes. No? So your computer can be used as a server. And, and we call that one as the local host. Okay? Uh, we use a software. It's called AMP or XAMP or WAMP. No? So, uh, ginagamit siya particularly when you are developing a website in a way na uh, you want to test it in a local environment. But may nakita kong sagot kanina, no doubt when the data becomes uh, big, no? Or when the load is, is too much already. That's true. Um, pag ginamit mo yung computer mo, tapos um, you set up a local network, LAN, local area network, and you let other computers access that computer for data, of course, babagal yung computer mo. Hindi niya kaya. Kasi hindi siya designed for that. No? Hindi siya designed. And, unless, of course, you have a server na local pa rin siya, composed of multiple computers, multiple CPUs. Okay? Tapos may napa-access natin sa mga local users. Common siya sa mga offices, sa mga LGUs, di ba? Nandun yan. Meron yan silang mga sariling servers doon. Pero again, guys, those are just computers still. Computers pa rin yan. It's just this, these are type of computers designed for hosting. Okay? Um, so, uh, how does it differ from, um, from the web hosting that we're gonna use, no? Um, while well, you can develop your project in a local computer on a local host and then upload it later to your uh, live web hosting company or live web hosting service provider, yung pinagkaiba niya is usually yung mga web hosting companies na to, gumagamit siya ng mga multiple computers available for access, no? Um, even anywhere, no? Anywhere across the globe. So, so critical, when we talk about the, the selection of web hosting or server, critical kung saan yung primary market na gagamit ng website, critical yung pagpili kung saan located din yung server. Okay? Kasi ibig sabihin yan, kung malapit yung server, mas mabilis na download yung data. Mas madalis, mabilis na na naloload yung website on the browser. But if mas malayo yung, ano, yung server, Ibig sabihin, mas malayo din yung, mas, mas matagal yung ita-travel ng data from that server to the browser. So, uh, dito na pumapasok yung concept ng CDN, which I'm gonna discuss later. Okay? CDN, yung idea ng CDN is, instead, for example, yung server mo is nasa US, tapos yung users nasa Philippines, instead na yung users mag, when they browse the, the, the website in the browser, Instead na yung browser magre-request ng data from the server in the US and load that one in the browser, yung gagawin niya, gagawin ng CDN is mag access siya ng mga data sa mga pinakamalapit na mga data centers. Kasi yung CDN, dinidistribute niya yung content across all servers, across the globe. So kung yung user is from the, from the Philippines, siguro yung isi-serve ni CDN na data is galing kay Singapore na data center. Gets nyo? So, ganun siya. 
Okay, so but that is just um an overview of the of the I know we, we don't have to go in depth uh too much in depth on the on the server no but in a nutshell ito yun. So for you to have a website, you need to have the domain name, you need to have the SSL, you need to have the, the, the server or the C panel. So later on, guys, when you have a client, ano ba yung kailangan namin? Tatanungin ng client, ano ba yung kailangan namin for us to get started with this? Okay, um, yung sasabihin nyo lang is, kailangan namin ng down payment pang bilhin nito. <laughs> down payment pang bilhin nito. Of course, um, you can add more if you want if you want to to get a partial payment. But at the very least, ito yung kukunin nyo. Kasi kung hindi nyo yan pababayaran, baka kayo ang magbayad yan for the client. Okay? Okay. Uh, hold on. Okay, so let's move on. Now, how do you register domain name? No? So, how do you register domain name? So sabi nga natin kanina, um, yung domain name is kailangan natin siya sa paggawa ng website. So paano, na, paano kayo magkaroon yan? Of course, binibili yan. No? Binibili yan sa mga tinatawag natin na tindahan. Joe. No? Tawag doon, domain registrar. Okay? Binibili siya sa mga domain registrars. And... Um, Yung domain name, no? Um, I mean, yung mga domain name registrars, madami siya. Um, napakita ko sa inyo mamaya yung mga different companies na ma ma bibilhan niya, no? mabibilhan nyo ng mga domain names. Okay? But before that, let's talk about the best practices when uh, choosing a domain name or when purchasing a domain name. Number one dyan, choose appropriate TLDs. TLDs may, uh, TLD means top level domain. Dot .com ba siya, dot .net ba siya, dot .org ba siya, dot .info, dot .digital. Okay? So yan yung TLD. Okay? So if you feel like yung website is pang commercial, dot .com. If you feel like your website is pang, uh, pang certain organization, dot .org. Or for certain community, dot .org or kung pang group of people naman or network .net if you just want to put up a website uh, because you want to share something that info pwede yan or if you want to have something like a digital business that digital madami na actually yung mga TLDs no but the idea is just for you to select or choose the appropriate TLD for every project that you may have in the future another thing is you must consider SEO so, for example, uh, my prospect kayo na client. Tapos yung client na yan is vendor siya ng mga um, dried mangoes in 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 I don't know if may dried mangoes sa sa inyo no. Uh, Sabi na natin may dried mangoes sa uh, Davao. Sa Davao, yeah. Okay. So, uh, how do you think you can? Uh, what, what do you think is the best domain name na i-register niyo for that uh, business? Of course, titingnan nyo, kailangan bang i-retain yung brand ng client? Baka may brand X na si client na pangalan. So when you register that, sasabihin nyo na lang siya na brandx.com. So that when the, uh, when the user or the potential customers look for brand X online, makikita na kaagad ni Google yung website ni brand X, which is brandx.com. E ngayon, bago pa lang si, ano, si, si client, pero... Um, wala pa siyang brand na na gusto niyang ah, hindi hindi pa built up yung brand niya instead gusto niya lang gusto niya lang manown in that area siguro pwede niyo sabihin na kagayandriedmingos.com gets so ganoon siya pinipili what if person siya as i've said walang ibang mas magandang brand kumpara sa pangalan ninyo pangalan nila charlesdagret.com parang ganon <laughs> or whatever na nandun yung pangalan nyo. Okay, pwede yun. And short is best. Short is best kasi, remember, kahit hindi natin pinapamemorize nila yung IP address nila ng domain nila, kahit readable pa rin yan ng tao, pero mahaba naman, 
baka may makalimutan niya pag type in niya yung pagka type niya ng domain name na type yung competitor kasi more or less similar lang so instead na punta sa website napunta tuloy kay yung competitor okay so it's it's better if you if you register a domain name na short lang But when you talk about short, usually these are more than three or four na mga uh, terms. Kasi yung mga domain names na three, two, or one, those are premium domains. No? And napakamahal nun. It costs thousands of dollars to purchase them. Swerte ka if makahanap ka ng four-letter na domain name. Kasi uh, bibihira na lang yung mga yan. Okay? Okay, branded, yun yung sabi ko kanina. And among others, no, may mayroon pa mga different um best practices sa mga domains um like intellectual property, 'di ba? Of course, you will not register a domain name na mayroong IP. Kasi when you do, pwede kang makasuhan 'yan. Kaya medyo ingat. Hindi ka pwedeng mag ano, mag-register ng ng domain name ng LGU. Basta-basta, di ba? Kasi meron yan sila. Uh, mandated yan mga LGU to have their own websites under the .gov.ph na domain name or na, na TLD. Okay? Uh, pwede rin nga pala dito guys mag .ph, yung TLD or .com.ph just like what we have, no? Ah, hindi pala dito. <laughs> yung, yung isa, yung adworks.com.ph yan. Um, pero may, meron siyang kamahala ng konti. Kasi yung .ph as compared to um, .com, yung .com usually nasa mga $10 yan, more or less. But when you talk, or mga 500 pesos. But when you talk about .ph or .com.ph, umaabot siya ng mga 5,000 more or less. No? Ayan. But if the client is willing to pay for it naman, uh, of course, you just have to consider that one in your pricing. Okay? Okay, so ito yung mga popular domain name registrars. So nandyan si GoDaddy, nandyan si Namecheap, nandyan si name.com, si Inom, among other companies na nag-o-offer ng web hosting. Okay? But uh, mostly yung mga back-end niyan is Inom, name.com, uh, name Namecheap. Ito yung mga ano yan, yung mga uh, back-end usually. Okay? Um, the one that you have uh, from TechWorks Hosting, uh, yung domain, pinorchase namin yung sa back-end. No? So yung nakikita nyo is TechWorks siya, pero sa back-end pa rin sa binili. Alright? So, okay. That's for the domain name. Now, let's discuss about how you can sign up a uh, web hosting or your server. Okay. Okay, so yung, yung just few items mo na no, from the fundamentals. When we say, um, when we say server, um, although na-discuss ko na siya kanina, very quick lang na, no? um, yung server natin, uh, it's a system no, of one or more computers that store, deliver, or serve web contents or resources. Ito yung tinatawag nating download. So, nag-load nag, um, nag, nag kayo ng website, guys, pero wala naman kayong dinownload doon sa local computer. So, yung session nyo sa, sa computer, I'm sa browser, matatawag pa rin ba natin yung download? Yes, that is a download, no downlink. Kasi or download technically. Kasi nag-download yung browser ng data from the server. Actually guys, nag-download yan to your local files, yung I mean to your local drive. Hindi niyo lang napansin. Do you notice it? Do you notice it? Na minsan yung drive niyo lumalaki pag hindi kayo nagme-maintenance ng computer. We call that one as cached files, no? Nandun usually yan sa certain section na if you are on uh, PC, nasa ano siya, sa Drive C, Documents Data, or, or Browser Data. Nandun yan. Lumalaki siya habang tumatagal. Kasi actually, technically, yung browser, nag-download yun ng data from the server. So kahit hindi nyo siya intentionally dinownload, pero nag-download yun, as you use the website or as you keep using websites. Okay? It can also receive contents from client or from your browser. Ito naman yung tinatawag nating upload. 
Do you have any idea how it works? So, sabi natin yung server, ginagamit siya to store contents. Nandun yung WordPress natin, nandun na yung mga files natin, nandun yung mga designs, etc. When the user browse in the web, in the, in the, uh, when the user browse the website, tapos uh, in the browser, na-load na yung contents, nag-download yung browser ng data no? from the server. Now, there's also another way for the server uh, uh, I mean, there's another use case of the server, which is to accept or to receive contents from the browser. Pabalik naman. How do you think it works? An example that you can cite? Example dito is yung mga form submission. Very good, no? So meron dito, yung mga form submission. When you fill up the form, you click submit, yung browser, sinesend niya nga to sa server. So, nandun yung data sa server. So, ganun yan. It's called upload. Okay? And when we talk about the server, when we talk about um, web hosting, meron niyang operating systems. Di ba sabi nga natin, computer din lang yan eh. So, meron din yang OS or operating systems. So, meron tayong tinatawag na MS Windows Server. So, as you can see, may pinagkaiba na siya. No? Hindi lang siya uh, Microsoft Windows 10 na typical na OS ng isang computer kasi hindi naman siya designed for server. Merong specific uh, OS si Microsoft for servers. It's called MS Windows Server. Uh, pag Linux naman, meron din tayong tinatawag na Ubuntu Server or Ubuntu, no? CentOS, Red Hat uh, Enterprise, or Unix. No? So, yung mga to, yung, yung apat na to, more or less, merong mga similarity to. Uh, they belong in the same family. So far, wala pa akong nakitang uh, OS sa server ng, ng Apple. No? <laughs> so it's like it's not their market yet. Uh, si Microsoft uh, at saka si, si, si Linux family yung malakas dito sa mga server OS. Any idea why it's like popular yung mga to? Ng mga, server, uh, ng mga OS sa servers? Unlike the likes of uh, Windows OSs. It's because of, yeah, aside from it being free, hindi rin siya basta-basta nakahack. No? Yung mga ito. And it's it's also, ano, it's also like there's a community na nag, nagbabak on, on, in these platforms. Okay, so, okay, so yun yung, I hope you already understand what is a server, ha? Huh? What is a web hosting? Now, let's talk about WHM. So, sabi natin kanina, okay, computer, so paano nga natin ma, paano natin mamamanage yun? Paano natin mamamanage yung server? Meron tayong tinatawag na WHM or Web Host Manager. So, Web Host Manager is a web-based tool used for web server administration. In other words, guys, um, Kasi before, yung mga, yung mga web server administrator, they use um, command lines. No? Although ginagamit pa rin naman siya ngayon um, para ma-access nila yung mga servers, command lines yun. Remember the, 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 yung sa CMD, yung command, paan ba? Yung, sa, yung CMD na ano? Command tool, this one. Uh -huh. Hold on. Yung kagaya nito, it's like that before, no? Yung, yung pagka-type ka ng ganito, tapos papasok-pasok, ganun dati, no? mag mag, mag ginagamitan ng command line. But because web hosting is becoming more mainstream, kasi nga, hindi, hindi naman user-friendly pag command line, di ba? Kasi parang pag-coder talaga siya. So these days, meron na siyang tinatawag na mga WHM to manage, to manage the server. So what is WHM? It's just an interface. Interface lang siya na nandun lahat ng mga options paano i-manage yung server. Papakita ko sa inyo kasi part siya actually ng training ninyo that you, you need to learn how to manage that, how to manipulate your server. Okay? Now when we talk about um, WHM, it listens at port 2086 na. No? So ano ibig sabihin ng with this listens at port 2086 or 2087? 
In other words, when you when you access the portal of WHM, nag-append kayo dito ng 2086. Ang ganyan. Or 2087. Dapat meron ganyan always. Kasi it was designed to listen for request. Di ba? On that port. Okay? Okay. Okay? Uh, Didi mo ko siya mamaya. Now, ano naman yung pinagkaiba ng si panel kay WHM? So si WHM, WHM is a control panel software. Control panel din siya, no? Providing a GPU or graphical user interface and other tools for end users to have a simplified process of hosting a website. So more or less parang WHM din siya. Okay? Actually parang more or less the same talaga siya, no? Pero i-explain ko maya yung pinagkaiba. Now, that uh, C panel contains add-on auto installers like Installatron, Fantastico, Softaculous, among other uh, auto installers, no, allowing users to install WordPress CMS in just a click of a button. So in other words, guys, um, because of of C panel, because of the likes of Installatron or Fantastico or Softaculous, yung pag install ng WordPress, click of a button na lang siya. Hindi ka hindi ka tulad ng dati na uh, mag access ka pa kung saan yung uh, location ng install file ng WordPress. Hindi na sa ganun. Ngayon, meron ng click one click installation ng mga uh, software like WordPress inside cPanel. Now, cPanel naman it listens at port 2083. So, what does it exactly means? Uh, when you access your cPanel, ina-access niyo siya by adding 2083 colon 2083 um, next to your domain or domain name. So baka mamaya sasabihin guys, sir, hindi ko ma-access si cPanel. Baka mamaya hindi hindi ka hindi, uh, wala walang ano dito, walang 2083 or mali yung location, mali yung domain na, na nilagay mo diyan. So diyan siya niyo ma-access by adding 2083 next to your domain. Okay? Okay. So, now let's, uh, as part of the web hosting fundamentals, let's talk about SQL. So, as you can see, no, um, SQL is an open source RDM, RDBMS or Relational Database Management System. The programming language used to create, modify, and extract data from RDB. Okay. In other words, guys, lahat ng mga data natin na, sin, na, na, nandun, na nandun sa server, naka-database yan. Okay, naka-database. When we talk about database, ano yung pumapasok sa, 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 sa mind natin, guys? What comes first? What comes to mind first when we hear the word database? Data, di ba? Data is stored somewhere. Now, This data are actually stored in a way na naka-table siya. Meron mga tables. If you know if you if you know how to do the command line interface to communicate to the database, pwede 'yon. Pero again, hindi kasi lahat ng mga uh, as as the as the as the web hosting become mainstream, di ba? Hindi na kasi dapat um, command line yung pag interact sa sa database. Instead, gagamitan rin siya ng interface. So ano yung tawag ng interface na yun? MySQL. Okay? PHP my, PHP my admin. Okay? Okay, so PHP my admin. All right. So when you sign up later guys for web hosting, ito yung mga companies na pwede niyong puntahan. Kay GoDaddy, kay SiteGround, kay HostGator, kay Dreamhost, kay Cloudways, kay Hostinger, or kay Techworks Hosting. Okay? Pwede kaya doon. So, um, it's really just up to you no? kung, kung saan yung the best um, web hosting service na, pwede, ah, na, na gusto nyo pag-sign up. And. Okay? But of course, you have to weigh in the, ano, the, the pros and cons. Alright? Okay, so, When you log into ano to, to WHM, 
Pinakita ko dito, sabi ko dito, log in to 64.91 to 50.75, di ba? Tapos may colon siya, 28 to 7. Kasi sabi nga natin, yung WHM, it listens at port 28 to 7. Now, the WHM, guys, um, this is for those people or for those web developers who already owns a server, yung buong server. Okay? Now, what if kung si, uh, part lang ng buong server meron kayo, si panel yung gagamitin ninyo, hindi yung WHM. Okay? So, si panel ganito. And when you access the cPanel, ganito siya. No? Uh, yung domain name ninyo, tapos 2083. Now, kung na... Kung na um, okay, ito yung, yung interface ng cPanel. This one is sa uh, WHM. Okay, more or less the same lang sila talaga. May similarity when it comes to looks. No? Okay. Um, inside cPanel, dun, dun nyo siya nakikita yung... Um, yung, yung, uh, yung Saktakilos, yung, yung auto-installer natin. Nandun rin yung iba, uh, I mean, yung ibang web hosting companies, instead of Saktakilos, they, they put something else no? na, na auto-installer. Depende na yan. Basta yung key lang dito is uh, auto-installer siya. You can think of this as an app store, yung Saktakilos. So nasa cPanel nyo yan. Okay, when you, when you get inside the cPanel, dito, Maki, hahanapin nyo dyan, nandyan si Softaculous. And when you click on it, ganito yung lalabas, madami siyang software, including uh, WordPress. Okay? Uh, Magdidemo tayo later on. Uh, so don't worry about it for now. Okay? So, um, in your cPanel, dito nyo rin na-navigate yung mga files ninyo. Yung mga in-upload nyo, yung mga WordPress files ninyo, dito siya na-navigate. Parang Local drive nyo lang yan, guys. Nasa internet lang, nasa cloud. Pero kung titingnan nyo yung structure nyan, yung file system, parang ano lang yan, parang computer lang yan, parang Windows computer na meron siyang certain directory. Tapos when you, when, pag pinasok nyo yun, may subfolders inside. Ganon lang yan. Okay? Meron lang sa mga additional extra files na ginagamit, guys, ng server. Uh, or ng, ng website. Okay, so as you uh, inside the cPanel, it's also where you can see the users, no? Or user um, manager. So part part siya ng task kung saan magkukuha kayo ng screenshot na talagang kayo lang yung user. Nakakapagsit din kayo ng mga security measures like to FA or to factor authentication and and of course the password. So ito naman yung sa uh, pag pag access ng database niyo uh, written in MySQL so yung yung platform na gagamitin natin is I mean yung interface na gagamitin natin is yung PHP my admin. Nasa loob din yan ng cPanel. Okay? I I'll, I'll do another uh toro demo later para ma mas makita niyo siya. Okay? Okay, so um can anyone please um explain the difference of WHM and cPanel Can you please turn on the ano, the camera Can anyone please explain the ano, the difference of WHM and WHM sir uh the you manage the whole server the cPanel uh, only part of the server very good, no? So uh, that's correct. Uh, thank you, Angelus. No, um, you can also think of it this way. Think about a condominium unit. I mean, condominium building. The condominium building is a WHM, and one studio unit is C panel. Nagets niya. So ganon yung uh, good analogy when we talk about uh, WHM and cPanel. All right, so let's move on. Thank you for sharing. Now let's discuss about CDN. Ano nga ulit yung CDN, guys? Content Delivery Network. Okay? 
uh, CDN is content uh, content distribution network. Um, now, sabi dito na, uh, CDN is is a uh, CDN is means content distribution network. It is a geographically distributed network of proxy servers and data centers. Yun yung sinabi ko kanina na um, CDN it is like a network of servers network of data centers scattered across the globe strategically no kung saan mostly yung mga hot, hot zones when we say hot zones madaming users okay so think of it that way lang muna at this point na ah okay CDN is multiple servers multiple data centers across the globe now it allows for the quick transfer of assets needed for loading internet content including html pages gs files style sheets or css no um, images videos among others no yung lahat na nakikita natin sa internet halos lahat ng malaking website guys gumagamit ng cdn facebook google may mga cdn yan mga, mga data centers yan sila um, it is also used to protect uh, websites from the DDoS attacks or den distributed denial of service attacks no so why why is that it's because uh di ba nga, yung CDN it creates multiple copies of the website across different data centers so once na compromise yung isang uh, may na, may na attack na certain um website yung yung na attack na attack yung na, na attack nila actually is not the real time data Diba? It's, it's more of a copied version of the website. So, yun yun din yung advantage ng, 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 ng CDN. Okay, so when we talk about CDN, meron din no? mga CDN providers. I mean, so nandyan yung Cloudflare, nandyan yung Amazon Cloud CloudFront, nandyan din yung Google Cloud uh, CDN, Key CDN, Stockpath, no? or Fastly. Madami actually, madami CDNs. Um, yung very popular na CDN these days, guys, uh, is called Cloudflare. Uh, it's very mainstream to a point na almost every website these days use that. No? Kasi meron sila, maganda rin kahit yung free, uh, free version lang ng Cloudflare. Okay? Uh, yung mga ibang CDN may bayad. Cloudflare may bayad din naman, pero uh, meron silang free tier no? na, na okay rin siya kahit free lang siya. Okay, so... Uh, sabi ko nga, no? uh, Cloudflare is a web infrastructure and website security company that provides a CDN service. So in our activity, in our training, we, we will use CDN uh, primarily from Cloudflare. And um, you'll be able to learn how to navigate around your CDN. Um, yung mga, makikita nyo yung mga sinabi ko kanina, yung, C, uh, yung DNS yung DNS records, diba? nandun yan. Tapos yung mga stats, um, mga hits, mga browser hits. No? Tapos yung mga security blocks nila, meron yun dan. Uh, when you add your website to Cloudflare, ganito siya yung itsura. No? Um, you just enter your domain name and set up the, domain name, uh, the DNS info inside. Now, when it comes to the DNS info, this will be provided to you. You just have to enter these details inside. 